Elkara Ham Radio presents a Time Machine Tuesday vintage video release. Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at elkara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elkara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. This is KY4 VDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Well, one of the things I wanted to get into today is RFI, radio frequency interference. I know I've got some. In fact, before I got on camera, I double-checked some things, analyzed uh, my house a little bit, and sure enough, I can show you on the radio that I've got enough noise floor uh, that it is hurting my ability to hear weak signals. So what I wanted to do today is show you how to eliminate some of that, and uh, I need to do this while the wife is away uh, because I am going to be shutting down power to my house, showing you what the noise floor looks like um, with the power on, showing you with it off, and then isolating those uh, devices that may be actually hurting me within my shack today down in my basement. So let's get started. How do we reduce RFI? Coming up. Okay, so what I've done is I've turned on the 7300 this morning and uh, I wanted to know if I had any RFI. And one of the things I can tell right now is I've got a lot of noise here around 14, dot two six five now as most of you know uh, you'll see this where it looks like it's across this this wide swath uh, it's not centered in this particular case but it is definitely there and this is actually going to hurt my ability uh, to hear weak signals there could be a signal in there and I wouldn't even know it uh, or even if I did it would be very difficult to be able to copy them to get a QSL this is with the power turned on in the house so what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the power in the house and then check the same frequency and see what we can find and uh, sometimes it's really eye-opening when you run these kinds of tests and I knew I had some because I've seen this behavior before watching um, a couple other videos especially ham radio crash course gave me a, an idea of what to look for and if you haven't seen Josh's video uh, I'll try to put up a card here so that you can see that but we're going to try to attempt the exact same type of testing and uh, what I'm going to do next is go turn off the power and let's see if a lot of this banding goes away so I'll be right back in the next segment okay we are back I have not touch the radio but take a look at what I see uh, it really truly is amazing and there are some weak signals these could be European or something like that let's see if we can pull in one of these Now, as you can tell, this is European. This is 20 meters, and we're able to hear Europe during the middle of the day. That's just one and a half uh, kilocycles down from where we had all that noise just a second ago, and I wasn't seeing that, and it would have been very difficult to hear it. Um, I, again, it's amazing when you see that, and all I've done is turn off the power to my house. So what we do next is we go and we start turning the breakers on to see when does the noise come back. And then I'm going to show you some products that I think you might be interested in as a way to cut down on that radio frequency interference. Let's give it a shot. Let's start turning some breakers back on and let's see when the interference comes back. Be right back. All right. So what did we find? Well, I have two halves to my breaker box uh, of uh, uh, breaker switches. And uh, I had disabled them all. As you guys saw, the noise went away and I enabled the entire left-hand side of that breaker panel. No additional noise that I could see. So the next thing I thought, well, let's work on the right-hand side. So I enabled half the right-hand side, 
and came back and looked at my radio and sure enough, the noise was back. So I thought something that I've just re-enabled is now uh, creating all of that noise. Well, I looked at my breaker panel as to how things were labeled and I noticed most of the uh, um, breakers that I had turned back on were mainly lights and electrical sockets, but at the very bottom of the right-hand side was the furnace. So I turned everything back on but the furnace, came back down, nothing. But as soon as I turned the furnace back on, it was back. Now, the other half of the right-hand side has the dishwasher, the refrigerator, the dryer, the um, oven, and the microwave. I turned all those back on but left the furnace off and didn't see an appreciable bit of noise. So that's a good thing. You don't want a lot of your appliances creating uh, that kind of RFI. And in this particular case, they didn't appreciably that I could tell, just the furnace. So in the next segment, what, we, what I need to do is investigate the furnace. Is there anything that I can do? Does it have an electrical cord that I can use a toroid on, for instance? Um, but at least I know the furnace is a culprit in this particular uh, setup. And so now it's on to the furnace. So I'll bring you back. We're going to go investigate that furnace. Okay, so now we're at the furnace. And so what I'm doing is just kind of doing a visual to see if there's any kind of electrical that I might be able to adjust. And, you know, when you don't know much about furnaces or some of the equipment in your house, you're thinking, well, you know, there ought to be a plug, right, somewhere on the furnace. Well, in fact, there is not. There is power, of course, but it is hard-lined into the uh, electrical on the house. So there's not a whole lot I'm going to be able to do as it relates to the electrical for this furnace, at least not at the moment. So what that means is, is that if I'm going to be doing radio and I want the lowest RFI, I might need to double check that the furnace is not running ultimately so that I can actually be able to do radio with the least amount of noise. So when I bring you back, now we're going to take a look at some of the other things that you can do about your um, radio, your HF radio, to also reduce noise that is coming into the radio uh, from external sources. So nothing I can do about the furnace except make sure that it is off. And uh, next we're going to look at uh, defenses that you can put in and around your house on devices and on your radio to make your uh, your uh, noise floor as low as it can be so that you can hear some of those weaker signals. So I'll be right back with some of those solutions. Okay, so what I have in front of you are some solutions from Palomar Engineers, uh, palomarengineers.com. On the right hand side we have the ICOM 7300 solution. They have a number of toroids and uh, click on elements for the power coming into your radio, the uh, antenna as well. Now if you've got a headset, some of the other elements that has any kind of a wire, you can also utilize uh, the uh, snap-ons, which is really cool. I'll open this up and show you that uh, here. Let me take it off camera and uh, let's bring it back in. So you'll notice we've got a little bit of paperwork and you can see one of the snap-ons here. I've got, uh, I think, two or three in this box, and then the toroids. And these are pretty beefy. I, I don't have small hands, but you can see these are pretty beefy, in fact, uh, as far as that goes. So I've got two of those. We're going to go ahead and install those in the next segment. Now, I've also got the toroids in the middle. So if you'll notice in this particular case, we've got the five toroids. And there's technically ten in that package because I've got way too many wall warts as most people do. Wall warts are just amazingly bad <laughs> when it comes to RFI. So in this particular case, you can see they're not large, but you don't need a large one for wall warts typically. You just need to wrap the power through there a few times, the cord, and uh, that should cut down on any noise being generated. So we'll bring you back and show you an example of that. The next solution that I bought just to uh, uh, try some things out was the switch mode power supply common mode RFI noise suppressor uh, and it's also a couple of toroids. I'll go ahead and open it up just so that you can see it. We've got the paperwork here and then we've got some peanuts but ultimately inside here we have the two toroids similar to the ones we saw for the 7300. So we'll install that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break here. We're going to ins I'm going to show you installing one of the bigger toroids, some of the wall wart toroids, and then ultimately after everything is installed, I'll show you the uh, backside and some of the elements. And then we're uh, we're going to go see if we've cut down any noise, even if the furnace is turned on. So be right back with an installation of some of these solutions. Okay. 
Now what I wanted to show you is utilizing one of the larger toroids and wrapping the power uh, cable uh, that comes for the ICOM 7300 around that toroid. Now you'll notice on one end we've got these big beefy fuses so this is going to prevent me from really doing anything on this end. So I'm going to use the blue end that goes into the radio. Typically you want the toroid as close to the radio as possible. Um, and the same thing for an antenna feed. Uh, we'll show you that in a different video when we uh, put up another antenna. But a lot of times you want the toroid closer to, the, for instance, on a dipole at the very top where the dipole ends come in. Uh, so we're going to wrap this blue one. Now, how many wraps? Well, let me bring the instructions over here. You'll notice for the uh, RF, uh, the, which will be the uh, um, antenna, you'll notice that uh, they're talking somewhere between what? We got five to nine turns. And for the AC-DC input, we're looking at five to, uh, excuse me, three to seven turns. For the other types of cables that could go into the radio, uh, we have some of those snap-ons. I don't have a lot of other things coming into this radio, so I'll use those snap-ons elsewhere. But uh, we're definitely going to wrap that AC-DC input. So three to seven turns is what we're trying to do. So what I'll try to do is show you this on camera as best as I can. We're going to take our toroid and we're going to just push the blue side of the connector through. And we also want to make sure that we have enough cable here because you're going to try to do three to seven turns. So what we're going to do is we're going to go about that much. Here's my end. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass the blue back through. In this case, we've already got our first turn. So feel good about yourself. You've already got a turn. And ultimately, what we'll probably do is use some zip ties just to keep it from moving. The next thing we want to do is, again, pass it through again. And ultimately, we're going to repeat this process until we get about three to seven turns. So um, a lot of people wonder if this puts stress on the cable, if it's going to harm anything. I have not seen anything to that effect. All right, there's three. I think I can get quite a few more. So let's, let's just keep going until we can't do it anymore. And then I'll go off camera and put the cable ties on. But uh, let's get, uh, see if we can get at least four or five through here. And again, the tighter you can pull this, the more room you'll have to put that uh, connector through. So I'm trying to keep this fairly tight while I keep it on camera for your nice folks. How many turns do we got through? We got five at this point. Let's tighten it up a little bit see if we can get one more turn on this thing and I think we'll be able to do it come on there we go let's stop at six for now I could probably get a little bit more but uh, I'm looking pretty good there I'm uh, not unhappy with that at all in fact I'm gonna spread this out just a smidgen and then uh, what we'll do is we'll come back off camera and I'm gonna go ahead and install this and see what it looks like uh, on the backside when I bring you back we'll uh, do the wall wart next and uh, yeah, I'll be back in just a few moments. All right, gentlemen and ladies in the audience, we've got a wall wart. And guess who's one of the worst offenders in the wall wart industry? I'm not really trying to throw anybody under the bus, but this is one of the bowfangs that I've got. I just pulled this one out, just looked at it, and uh, thought, hmm. I bet you anything, because a lot of times these are just very inexpensive. Those tend to be the worst offenders, although you might find one from just about any vendor that may not be the greatest. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and put one of the smaller toroids. I've wound it to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Now, typically the more windings, the better. So seven and that, I couldn't get that barrel connector through there anymore. And I've used zip ties to make sure that it stays in place. Uh, so that is one of the wall warts and what you want to do is you just duplicate this over and over again any wall wart that's near your equipment uh, you want to make sure you do this with uh, and uh, it's not hard and the cool thing is it's a, a little bit of an investment of time a little bit of money these ferrites that they use from Palomar engineers are top-notch uh, you probably could get away with some of the ones on uh, Amazon uh, and you can get Palomar, I think, up there as well. But uh, I ordered these direct from those folks. Uh, and so uh, giving them a shot. And uh, here's a good example of that. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and install some of the other elements and toroids and cinch them down with the uh, uh, nylon ties. And we'll uh, finish up the video and uh, let's go make a contact when we get done. Alrighty, and we're back. So what I've done is I'm... Uh, uh, just showing the back side of the uh, ICOM 7300 and as you can see I've got a toroid now on the power coming in as well as the toroid on the antenna coming in on the radio. So 
Those are the two that I've got on the radio to help cut down any RFI that might be coming in on those lines. And then over here we have the power supply and I've got two toroids here. I've got one on the DC line which will be for the distribution. So you can see right there little DC action toroid and then we've got one on the AC. So there's the AC toroid going into the power supply and then while I was also at it I went ahead and took one of the 10 wall wart uh, toroids and I installed this on the Wi-Fi that I have here for our Echolink system and so that also now has a toroid. I still have more work to do but I wanted to show you some of those examples for instance as we go forward and when I come back we're gonna make a contact uh, on the 7300 just make sure that nothing has really changed from that point of view uh, they are DXing this weekend so hopefully I can uh, reach in there and get a contact so I'll be right back we'll make a contact Kilo Yankee 4 Bravo Delta Papa QSL, Tony, great to make a contact from uh, Spain. I have been to Barcelona before. Beautiful town, great food. QSL? Okay, QSL, uh, this is Echo Alpha 3, kilowatt Echo. Okay, very fine copy. Thank you very much, my friend, for this contact. I wish you all the best uh, for you and for your family. Good luck and good DX. Uh, Kilo Yaki 4, Bravo Delta Papa. This is Echo Alpha 3, Kilo Echo, 73. 73, Echo Alpha 3, Kilo Echo. Have a great DX. Okay, you're the best. Bye-bye. Attention, my friend, Yankee, Yankee. Yankee, Yankee, Echo Alpha 3, Kilo Echo. So, folks, made a couple of adjustments, and uh, have the adjustments helped me make it into Barcelona on 20 meters? I don't know. But I do know that the noise is down. I know where there are interference problems in my own home, namely that furnace. And I do know that uh, these toroids will make a difference as far as cutting down on noise coming in on shielding and so forth on just about any wire. So I hope you take a little bit from this video as a learning aid. Uh, don't dismiss RFI in your own home, in your own shack. Uh, fluorescent lights, uh, appliances, TVs, wall warts, they all can potentially be a problem. I'm lucky I live in rural Kentucky. I don't have a lot of neighbors that would interfere. I don't have a lot of lights around me. Uh, it helps, but your own home can also be or help to degrade your ability. Making a contact today in Spain and Barcelona is uh, a great way to at least think I've made a difference, especially on a weaker call. Didn't get a signal report there, should have done one myself, uh, but he was coming in about a 5'8", and he was hearing me just fine. 20 meters for me has not typically been great, but uh, using the AV640 from high gain seemed to work just fine. I'm KY4BDP Brian. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, give us some comments down below. Let us know some of the things you've done to reduce RFI in your shack, and we'll see you down the road. 73s.